안고 있죠. ต้องดูดูจะเป็นประกาศต่อกิจกรรมการในเวทีสมรกาตามการวิพีสมรกาในไทนี้ต้องดูดูจะต่อสำหรับกิจกรรมสะใจสติลเฮดเดอร์ดหนึ่งส่วนดินดาวดอยดำนางสหปริญญาดูไปใส่ขอบทิศและดีการพิจารณาเทียบวัตถุเมียนวัตถุเมียนพิกีนักบุคคลเลยเอาอย่างเดียวก็ยื่นจะร่วมในขนมกิจกรรมการสมรกาไงนี่ส่งกรุบลุกทิ้งสำหรับสำนักการไงนี้กรุบเพียกีเตียงอ่อนในเรื่องใดนี้มีนวัตเมียนส่งกอดส่งกอไดไลท์ลุกนวลจี้มีนวัตเมียนเดิมตบคงครุ่นได้เลยพิการกล้ามันตบสำนักการนี้ตามจิตใจสมบัติอบอ่อนจนกระสลันบงได้มูลให้ปัญหาสกปรกและไงนี้นั่งบรรทัดสำหรับสกายกรรมสะใจสเตฟานเฮดเดอร์ให้ลุกมีนวัตเมียนรวยให้ขนมบรรทัดสำนักการนี้และไงนี้มันมีนสะใจบ่มรองนุ่ยส่งอ่อนคุณอ่อนคุณอ่อนมีดอลวิธีการจุนเตอร์ดำนางทาปัญญาในเมย์มันโตการตั้งสมโนเรดดาวจะปวดสะใจสติลเฮดเดอร์สมชื่นดำนางทาปัญญาสมโนเรดดาวสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่นสมชื่น Hi, Mr. Heather. I'd like to start, please, by asking some clarification questions in relation to your testimony towards the end of yesterday. You will recall that you confirmed an extract from E3 1714 in relation to the refugee interviews in 1980 and reference to the interviewee Nanyang, also known as Long, the passage of drying up the people from the enemy being part of a long standing plan and that being the relevant slogan. In relation to that, you said that you heard it from many people over many years, and that you heard it before April 1975 on radio broadcast. And it's the radio broadcast. I'd like to ask some further questions about that. Can you help? In what context this phrase, dry up the people from the enemy, was being broadcast? What I mean by that is what was the subject matter, what was the context in which this phrase was being used? Can you tell me what the context was in which this phrase was being used? Um, it, it referred ที่เรียนนี้โยงตัวเราสถานะเพียบแต่มีการปฏิญญาตุงโยกาตรุตราในประชาชนที่สัญญาในเครียดนี้ก็เถอะตัวไปเชื่อมีวิธีวิธีใน
คณะกรรมนิยายทำบรรทบนุคือนิยายจงชนะมาปอนปมบุญรอยเจ็ดสับประหุดอลทุสวัตชนะมาแปดสับเปียทากาชมเดียหายเปียถัดดอกปีจุนจิบันดอกสอนมุกนิดได้ยังเคยทาตามแต่ชมชามนักลงบัตรสมเพียนุคือยังกาชมเลียนุกธาจรันแต่เพื่อหลังโดยกาบังคับบังคับยังอายุนตัวเราก็ท้าเนี่ยแต่ตัวตัวกาบังชอบมันโจลตามโยบายเอาใจไปดมบอลขมังตัวดมบอลดมร้อนนุกคือคืออายุท้าก็ได้แต่ยุงตัวเราตัวกาการกับโดยอยู่ที่ตัวดมบอลนุ่งให้กีกีดอกจีจุนกรมให้กี b ì n h chun từ đồng bằng đồng đỏ đã thất được cả m c á c c r n g rồi bỏ mai cả hòm mà ông chúng ta xong đồng lực lục steel header mình tách tha ông chúng ta có hành chơi lục một lò thạch cắm cứ như vậy ở ông chúng ta sẽ đáp chẳng xong mọi lục xong luôn ở đây là bật vào lục trong đây tha lục lời như vậy nếu cứ như vậy ở ông chúng ta sẽ đáp và đây tha cả bằng hai nữ การยี่สิบได้มุกนั่นคือใบมุกมุกอองจุ่มแร่มันก็ใบจีการสมตรอบเชียงสมลูกยูเลสลูกตุ่มรูเอเดียบอดนองการยี่นั่นคือนี่ยี่อองจุ่มแร่สดับสมเจอจุ่มโตลูกดำนางทาเป็นยังดำนางทาเป็นยังจำจองสู้สมนูเดินลูกสาวใส่อัมพีแห่งก้าดันลูกบานดังต่อหลังอัมพีครองดงหายหนึ่งกำปองช้ำแล้วในยุคนี้ปีแค่กำปองช้ำลูกยี่ลูกแค่กันยาชนะมาปองบริจาคสบายในรูปแบบของแต่ต้องตัวหนึ่ง Evacuation in Kampong Cham. Was the information you received from interviewees consistent with that being a voluntary evacuation or a forced one? The answer to that question is clear. อันนึงเกยเอาเนี่ยถึงเอาหนุ่มจะใช้นุ่มคือเกี่ยวกับท่าสมัครสมเพียบเนี่ยนุ่มตีนุ่มเขียนบนบานนุ่มตีนุ่มตีบนต่อปีเมียนเฮดกาหนุ่มบาทบาทสันเชียนเออดดองวิ่งกับท่าเมียนเฮดกาจับเพียบเขียนบานตัดดอกเตรียมบนแต่นุ่มตีนุ่มเขียนบานบานเตอร์เต I mean, my recollection is that some people describe the need to forcibly remove, or the need to forcibly remove, and there were some who eventually managed to return. While others describe not exactly the terror, but being taken by 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 the terror. ถ้ากูเต๋อใช่ไหมเนี่ยครับดัลจีเชื่อมันนุ่งดัลเพียคลุนเพียสักพี่ก็เลยมวยเต๋อก็เลยมวยขันน้องเฮ้ยโจลมาที่รุ่งแทนตุ้งช้ำตอนมูลแทนมวยชมรุ่นขันน้องเฮ้ยก็ดูเมียนฉันเตะจองตลอดเต๋อกันไหลดาวเด็กเกย์จะส่งตัวน่ารู้กันไหลดาวเด็กเกย์มอง The same question in respect to Udon when you were there on the 19th of March 1974. In terms of forced evacuation. Off the top of my head, my recollection is that. I only went for a day or two. I didn't do the evacuation. So the west, but as for the details, either I didn't get any, or I didn't get them without checking back. But in terms of Udon, you said yesterday that Udon was deserted. Can you again just? Just perhaps explain that or give a bit of colour or paint the picture about this desert. Well, 
bàn thai mà vậy bàn tiền tế chăm lời nó biết được chăm bàn thật đó là một đống tìm khổng cứ hà mơ tới khi mình một nơi chả ra thế đôi chìa tì là họ thán cứ tham mình một nơi chung luôn tôi và cứ nẹ tương nút nẹ chìa bì ca chùm lìa hợp bọc kìa cả nó khi bàn đọc luôn chênh thì đồng đá ca chùm lìa hơi lẹ luôn rồi có khỏi mốc của bàn mọi người tìm được khả rào phía nẹ đứng cứ mình mình là nơi tìm nó về đây khi ông tất đó là trong bàn khơi xạ sọc đồn chi mình miền bật sông hỏi mình miền nẹ nà nơi tìm nó tìm miền tài xạ sọc tìm miền nẹ nà nơi ruộng nơi lửa đồng bọn được trong tất đó là lại được trong tất đó tìm tì khá rong hỏi nâng vọt cư tất tì khi miền mình nụ nấu bạn cứ mơ tức hơn tự tì ở miền nền nền nâu đi. Mày final question yesterday was about the evacuation of Phnom Penh. Of Phnom Penh. And we dealt with, if you remember, Pong's notebook. Can I ask you, please, with your folders? I don't know where they are. Sorry, they're not in the back. Mr. President, can I please give Mr. Head of the folders which we've had in safe custody overnight? Thank you. 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 Mr. Hedder, can I ask you please to look at file four? Tab one. 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 You should have, I hope, reassessing, as I call it, in the short form. Can you confirm that? Yes. And I'd like you please to look at page six, and it's the section leading to footnote 17. This is to remind everyone E190.1.398. And can I ask please that all references today when I give a document are shown on the screen. Also to be abolished into the worker peasants as part of this uprooting socialist revolution. Were members of what the official CPK class analysis designated separate or special class types that did not fit neatly into its broader class scheme of feudalists Bourgeoisie, petty bourgeoisie, peasants and workers. In addition to intellectuals, these other class types included Republican soldiers and police, Buddhist monks and all nationalities, brackets, i.e. national minorities. Footnote 17 then references two DK cadre notebooks and references are given from the DC CAM collection of KNH0010 and KNH071. So again, can I ask please something about these DK cadre notebooks when you first saw them and um, again, just a little bit more detail. Uh, this again goes back to a time 
ដែលជាសភោកំណត់ដៃសូសាយទីស្គូលកោពីបុកស៍ដែលជាសភោសរសេរមកពីសង្គមចាស់ such as revolutionary flags or ហើយខ្ញុំបានពិនិត្យមើលឯកសារទាំងអស់នេះហើយ uh, Mr. Hedder, I think there's a, a request to sit slightly closer to the microphone, if possible. Next, I'd like to move to a document that's not in your folders. This is document E3 slash 38. And can I please hand you a copy of this document? This is an interview that you confirmed on the first day of evidence that you had had with this person. I don't want you to name him. I'm not going to name him. But for everyone's benefit, TCW494. Mr. President, can I please hand over the record of this interview that Mr. Hedder had with this individual? Is your memory refreshed by looking at the first page? It's a transcript again of this interview. Can I start by taking you to your page four? This is English ERN 0035 French 00441416 and Khmer 00379483 through If we look at page 4 on yours, Mr. Hedder, about two-thirds down the page, there's a sentence beginning in July 1975, I went to liberate. Do you have that? I'm now going to read it in full. Uh, in July 1975, I went to liberate the whole territory, and I was assigned a new task, serving as Deputy Secretary of Sector 21 and Head of the Sector 21 Committee in charge of economics, administration, education and organisation. Again, can you confirm that that's an accurate record recording of what was said to you in this interview? Um, with the caveat that this is not a recording of the Can I please take you to the next page, which is English-ERN 0035-0204. Now let's go to the second period starting from 1973 to the 18th of April 1975. During this period, Pol Pot reformed his policy in reforming the policy 
noticed The first thing was that they raised class issues and class struggle in the society. They mentioned five classes, such as workers, farmers, petty bourgeoisie, feudalists and capitalists. Among the five classes, they valued only worker and farmer class, while other classes were totally ignored and oppressed. Even middle-class farmers, upper-class farmers, petty bourgeoisie, monks, intellectuals were entirely oppressed. We also noticed their dictatorship issues and their peasant class. Is that an accurate uh, recording or reflection of what was said in this interview. Um, again, with the caveat that uh, this is not my translation, I would say generally yes. I'm somewhat troubled by the use of the word oppressed. Before being confident uh, uh, confirming the, the meaning, the sense, I'd actually like to see or hear that the mayor doesn't quite track for me. It could be correct, but it seems slightly peculiar. So, uh, with that caveat, yes. Uh, Mr. Hebert, we're having a Khmer version printed off. Perhaps if I can move on and then we'll come back to, uh, to this point. Uh, Not box. Can we go to the bottom of Page five. Same ERNs. ERN dial man. The four one six lines up from the bottom. This extract. Just setting the time, really. It's, it, it's talking the extract, and we in fact get the date two lines from the bottom. From 1973 onwards, they had conflict with Vietnam, so the person is talking about 1973. Can we go over your page, which is on page six? English 0035. Khmer 0037948536 and French 0044148. Top of the page. So they were concerned about the remaining forces doing other activities. This time they mainly used security positions and it was the security position which was relevant to class struggle and class dictatorship issues. This is what I would like to describe briefly. We noticed another point when monks and pagodas were gradually eliminated. Prisoners of war and defectors had previously been told that they were allowed to live in certain ways. This time, prisoners of war and defectors of Long Nol were wiped out. Belief and religion for both Cambodians and other ethnics were prohibited. Buddhism and Khmer superstition were prohibited as well. Again, can you confirm that that uh, is an accurate reflection of what you were told in this interview? Um, yes, but again with the same reservation. I, see, I, can see, I can see the Khmer here, uh, but it would be easier if I had a hard copy. The hard, the hard copy is coming now. Mr. President, can I please have a hard copy of the Khmer version? Okay, I can I can
Mr. Hedder, I'm going to go back to the some first look oppressed, because that was the first the word, word you mentioned. The Khmer page, and these are in the top left hand, in dark bold type, the ERN numbers. Um, oppressed, I think you'll find, at the very top of Khmer page, 0037948. The sentence was, um, even middle class farmers, upper class farmers, petty bourgeoisie, monks, intellectuals were entirely oppressed in the official court translation. English ERN 00350204, page 5. Um, the, the, the nuance here is that um, one might, one could possibly misread the English translation as meaning that these classes, classes mentioned uh, were to be oppressed by the Khmer Rouge. In, in fact, saying that they were among uh, the classes who were oppressed by the exploiting classes of the old society. And the second part, the sentence I was interested in, this is on English page 6. Khmer page 00379485, and it's towards the bottom of that page. And the phrase I was interested in in terms of translation was, this time prisoners of war and defectors of Long Nol were wiped out. Um, yes, um, this is a phrase which I conventionally translate as swept cleanly away. Thank you, that's a phrase many of us are familiar with. Um, can I take you back to the English now, but have the Khmer to it's in the middle of page six. This is in, well, I've already given the ERN. Uh, we were ordered to fight at 1 a.m. on the 31st of December. It says 1974, but can you check the command as to whether it's... Uh, yes, 31st of December 1974. And the war had to be over on the 30th of June 1975. So they held a meeting to realise attacks on every battlefield. Did they succeed? Generally speaking, gunfire was broken out on all battlefields on the 1st of January 1975 at 1am Again, can you confirm that that's an accurate reflection of what you were told in this interview? Yes. Still on the same page, still the same ERNs. During the attacks, Pol Pot estimated that victory would be achieved in February 
and he disseminated the information down to all districts and sectors. He ordered all districts and sectors to build houses for people to be evacuated from Phnom Penh or provincial towns to countryside. During that time, they announced that Phnom Penh dwellers were to be evacuated. So in February 1975, they disseminated the information to all districts and sectors to be housed, uh, to build houses for those soon to be come deportees. And I'll carry on because the next bit is also relevant. Nearly two months later, the country was liberated. In, no, I'm going to pause there. Can you confirm that that's an, uh, an accurate description of what you were told. Yes. I'm moving on to another general subject now. I'd like you to put that statement to one side, but we are coming back to it later on. The topic is command and authority structure. File 4. Tab three. Tab late bay. <coughs> you should have one page, is that correct? Look, Murder, Kate Madame Port, E number E one three one stroke one stroke thirteen point three. This is an extract from your book entitled Racism Marxism. Labeling and genocide in Ben Kiernan's The Pol Pot Regime. You should have page 32 in bold at the top. It's talking about the concept of party center, and you state that it was inherited by the CPK from the Chinese and Vietnamese communists, and the footnote 48 states in Chinese and Vietnamese communist parlance. Center refers to the highest leading structures of party organizations and of the country's political authority in the state sphere, including the party central committee and its various departments, the central government and other administrative bodies at the central echelon. You then refer in footnote 48, and I can't pronounce them, but you refer to a 1971 document in Beijing, a Hanoi University Press document from 1986, and a Hanoi document from 1978. Can you confirm that you read those documents and that they were your source? Uh, yes. Mr. Header, in, in the documents that you have looked at in Chinese, Vietnamese and Cambodian, have you ever encountered the term party center as the party central committee? Oh, sorry, I didn't see it. Um, the, uh, I think 
the answer to that is that yes, but only in the sense that the party central committee is one of a number of bodies that could be described or could be referred to by this phrase, the center. The center refers to a level within the party hierarchy or structure and not necessarily to any specific body at that level, either all of them or some of them or one of them. So the phrase in and of itself, party center, uh, is somewhat ambiguous. Thank you. File 4, tab 4. So your existing file, tab 4. Document number, P348, seven candidates. Can you please go to page 46? Uh, when I say page 46, you don't have the whole of the document, but if you look at the pages that you do have, they are paged in the top of the document. Do you have the page 46? It's reference to the statutes, and you say this. The statutes declared that the Central Committee's duties included implementation of the party's lines throughout the country, giving instructions to all its subordinate zone, sector and municipal organisations and to the party organs, taking responsibility for various nationwide departments and administering and deploying cadre and party members within the party as a whole, while maintaining a clear and constant grasp on their biographies and political ideological and organizational stances and constantly educating and indoctrinating them in terms of politics, ideology and organization. We know the document very well. It has case uh, E3 number E3 stroke 214. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, Council. Um, we're reaching now a uh, topic of questioning uh, in which uh, we would require a ruling from the Chamber. Um, I have not an objection to the way of the phrasing of the question in particular. Um, Prosecution is referring to a book which is on the case file. Prosecution is asking uh, the witness, uh, presumably, uh, about the source uh, in the footnote. However, this book is called Seven Candidates for Prosecution. It obviously, it has been written with a certain purpose in mind. And maybe the witness at one point will elaborate on the why or on the reasons why he wrote this book. But obviously, the title of the book itself, Seven Candidates for Prosecution, suggests that the book was written with the intent to uh, present uh, evidence in relation to not only uh, Q Sampan, but also our client. Um, so we have now here a situation that we have a witness who has extensive role, uh, who played an extensive role in, in the investigation, now being asked questions about the book, which is in essence uh, uh, plebeye for prosecuting and uh, so, although not objecting in a technical sense as to the way questions were phrased, I do object uh, that we now get into a situation that this witness is basically um, talking about his book, why these people, uh, including our clients, should be prosecuted. So I would like to have a ruling um, of your chamber as to the, the lawfulness, so to speak, uh, in respect of questions to this witness about this specific 
Mr. President, Your Honours, can I make it plain? As I hope I did yesterday, that I will not be asking Mr. Heder any opinions based on this book. This book has been admitted in evidence. Objections were submitted and ruled upon. It is on the case file. It has an E3 number. It is therefore, on the face of it, relevant and reliable. There may be a need for a ruling if I was stressing opinion. I'm not. I'm continuing the practice that I have now undertaken for a day and an hour in accordance with the trial chamber's direction of reading statements from books and asking questions about sources. That will continue to be my practice throughout this examination and I ask please to proceed in the manner that I have already been conducting my examination. Can I add, I've not even asked the question yet. ອັນແຮງກໍຄືຈຸນເດລູກໄຕຈະກໍມ <laughs> Thank you, President. <coughs> the Chamber has decided that the objection is not sustained. Uh, firstly, book, <coughs> excuse me, the book is on the case file and has been assigned an E3 number. Uh, and secondly, if the objection is to the probative value of the book, then that is a matter for the Chamber ultimately to determine. Thank you, President. How many versions are you aware of of these statutes? Um, I have a couple of originals. ແລະຄະນິກາຈະບັບດາມຫມູ່ຈໍານວນຍົ້ມຊື່ຖ້າວິທະຍາສາດາມຫມູ່ຈໍານວນຍົ້ມຊື່ຖ້າວິທະຍ
the question is, are there alternate versions? Uh, if so, uh, I, I haven't been aware of that. Uh, and based on your factual research, not opinion, not speculation, when were these statutes adopted? Um, I'm sure I've been told somewhere along the line in interviews that it was January 1976. And I'm pretty sure there's also reference to that fact in revolutionary flag or revolutionary use, revolutionary youth from around this Do you remember when we were... Um, you were giving evidence in Cambodian communism about the 1960 Congress and adoption of statutes. Can you uh, confirm that statutes were featuring in 1960? Uh, yes, presuming we can believe what Pol Pot Nguyen Chia and others have said, they themselves have said as much. File 4, tab 1. Page 12. English ERN. Zero zero six six one four six six Khmer zero zero eight three zero seven seven five French zero zero seven nine two nine two five it's in reference if, if it helps everyone to footnote 64 uh, sorry I should say reassessing in its short form e one nine zero point one point three nine eight to a great extent, however, the, linkid, the linkage Link between the centre and the districts was mediated via zones and sectors. Leading zone and sector cadre came to Phnom Penh for regular meetings and special consultations with Pol and Nua and there was also much written communication back and forth between the centre and the zones. Footnote 65 then references Kai Pok interview, and you go on to say, uh, this is in fact, sorry, in, in footnote 14, which will be back on page... On page five, so it's, it's inserting here also footnote 14 to give context to the Kai Pok interview. And so you say, in an interview with the author, brackets, header, on the 22nd of February 2001, in Siem Reap, Cambodia, Pok agreed to discuss evidence against himself and others on the condition that his remarks not be made public while he was alive. And then in terms of what he said, he conceded that as Secretary of the CPK North, brackets, later Central, close brackets, Zone Committee, he had implemented a CPK policy of killing Khmer Republic officials. 
initiated the arrest and ordered the execution of alleged traitors among CPK members subordinated to him and followed orders from Nguyen to assist in the arrest of other alleged traitors in the CPK ranks who he knew would be executed after interrogation by the CPK Security Service Headquarters S21 in Phnom Penh. Pox admissions with regard to initiating arrests were corroborated in an interview by the author with the former third-ranked member of the North Zone Committee, Pichieng, alias Tao, on the 14th to 15th of May 2001 in An Lung Ven, Cambodia. My first question is, is what you've stated an accurate reflection of what Kai Pok told you in the interview you had with him? Yes. Little bit more context. Kai Pok, Secretary of the CPK North Later Central Zone Committee. A little bit more information but not a life history. Uh, yes, he was um, from around May 75, Secretary of the North Zone, later redesignated the Central Zone, a uh, member of the Central Committee. Um, through the end of the period of Khmer Rouge rule, fell somewhat out of favor with the top leadership after January 1979 and was eventually placed into a semi retirement. Broke away from the Khmer Rouge in the late 90s, I think it was 98, um, and was made a general officer in the government army. And this particular interview was, in fact, arranged for me by uh, General Paul Saruan, who's currently uh, commander in chief, supreme commander of the Cambodian Armed Forces. Mr. President, subject to a direction or an application from the court, um, well, can I ask Mr. C Head of the question, is the interview you had with Kai Pork recorded in any way? Um, handwritten notes only, note, note tape recorded. Where are the handwritten notes and could they be sent here today or over the weekend? Uh, I don't have them with me. They're somewhere in the UK, I suppose. If on the direction, if it was given, by the President that you would be given any available resources here to assist in obtaining that, would it be possible? Um, the answer to that question is there are 45 filing cabinets scattered around various places in and around London. I don't know which filing cabinet they're in. Um, it wouldn't be easy. It would take time. Right, thank you. Thank you.
The second interview that you mentioned, in other words, to use your phrase, Hock's admissions with regard to initiating arrests, were corroborated in an interview with Pik Chien alias Tao. Um, how was that interview organised and how was it recorded? Um, uh, this this person was after January 1979 was Democratic Cambodia ambassador to China, um, and I met him in Beijing in late 1978. So he and I were acquainted. Um, in 2001, I approached him directly. Um, him, and, him and his wife directly in Long Vang, and he agreed to, to speak to me. Um, again, no tape recording, only handwritten notes in the same situation, I'm afraid, as with those of the interview of Kapok. And for completeness, one of the other sources that you gave in the footnotes was uh, the minutes of a quorum of the meeting on grassroots work 8th of March 1976, we're well familiar with this document, E3-323. Still in the document reassessing, page 13 please, and it's in reference to footnotes 68 and 69. Uh, zone secretaries provided information to the center about the situation in their areas of responsibility, demonstrating that the zones were keeping track of all activities right down to the district level and assessing the zone's right and wrong experiences in implementation of party policies. And in support of that, there is reference to two telegrams. They are on our file E3-952 and E3-871. Now, Mr. Hedder, with telegrams as a body of information, Yes, forgive me, Mr. President. No, I'm going to give a little bit more detail. E3-952, Telegram 94, that was from Pok to Pol, the 2nd of April 1976, and E3-871, which is Telegram 21, of the 21st of March, 1976. The book is E190.3. Sorry, I'll start again. E190.1.398. It's on the subject of telegrams. Now, can you help us as to when you first got to see, if we call it broadly, CPK telegrams that relate to the DK period? Um, late 1990s Thank you. On the same book, E190.1.398, it relates to footnote 70. According to the party statutes, zone party committees were to lead and implement policy down to the district level and below. And your sources are E3-214 statutes, you refer to Article 19, your translation, 
ដែលជាអេរ៉ាពូតអ៊ីនដឹកនាំអឺកម្មាភិបាលមូលដ្ឋានក្នុងការអនុវត្តអេកសារអី 3 this is about policy going down to the district level Thank you, Mr. Um, the prosecutor is getting crafty enough here in front of me the questions in such a way that it is a question um, to um, lift the veil of the question and it is a question to the opinion of the witness and uh, uh, we can all pretend today um, អឺយើងសង្គមថាថ្ងៃនេះលើតែអឺយើងបានធ្វើមិនសិលមិញនោះដែរគឺថាជាសំណួរទៅសាក្សីក៏ប៉ុន្តែខ្ញុំ ដោយគំនិតដែលគាត់នេះដែលទីខ្ញុំមិនឲ្យគាត់បញ្ជាក់យកបល់ទេខ្ញុំមិនសូមឲ្យសាក្សីនិយាយស្មានព្រៀងដ
ដែលគឺក្នុងគោលបំណងដូច្បាស់គឺបទសម្ភារការសម្ភារដោយផ្ទាល់គឺមិនឲ្យយើងបានទៅលើ ប៉ះសេរីចំទោះនឹងសម្ងាងហេតុនៃសេរីចំទោះរបស់មេធាវីអនុរក្សជាតិការពេក្រីលោកនុនជាអញ្ចំពោះរបៀបសំណួរការត
ជាងពលលេខចិត្តសបីនៅក្នុងពីបាលប្រជុំនឹងកម្មាភិបាលបានប្របាយការរបស់ and there's another document. I'll read it in. It's not, it's not on our case file. It's 1.6. Commander of the Standing Committee of Zone 203 sends to sector district, sub-district level party leaders 26th of November 1975. And also 1.64. Sector 23 sends to district, district and sector military headquarters. And the date of that document is the 22nd of October 1975. In brackets, after each of those documents, there are the letters B, D, N. Now, excuse me if you've already refer to BDN, but what is BDN in terms of these sources? Um, it's a but to my understanding, it's a cataloging number from the Vietnamese archives. And how did you have access to this information to be able to rely on it the um, That's explained in another document, which I don't it's in the text. It's in the text. It's in the text. It's Who's a scholar who works in Cambodia, mainland Southeast Asian historical Full Vietnamese translations of what were said to be Mary's documents and Vietnamese possession. And there was also an index to other Indian Vietnamese of other documents that were said to be in Vietnamese possession. Um, and then those materials were translated for me, uh, including the index by Richard Arat, who used to work here in the I think there may be reference to Richard Arant later, but we'll see. Thank you. Same document, footnote 78. Uh, this is E190.2.1.2. And this is E190.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2.1.2
going to allow you to have file two available. The topic is enemies. The topic is enemies. Thank you, Mr. President. File two. Tab one. Document number. E three one seven can you please go to page 66? English RN 0010075. Khmer 0032 Through seven seven and French zero zero six four nine zero one nine three two zero. It's at the bottom of page sixty six for you, Mr. Header, and there's reference to number thirty three. March the sixteenth, so nineteen eighty. My root location, source, ex-soldier from Ong Snol area. If we move on to the next page, I've already given the ERN this statement from this person. In 1972, there were lots of Lon Nol soldiers captured, about 500 of them. All were executed, none were forgiven. Can you confirm that that's an accurate recording of what you were told in this interview? Can you confirm that that's an accurate recording of what you were told in this when we say soldier, the the reference just says ex soldier from Ong Snul area. But I wonder is he was. Um, we, we know, uh, if I can take you to page sixty-seven. ERN's already given. There's a reference to as a former Long Nol soldier he was kept careful track of. And towards the bottom of the page, as a formal non former non Lol soldier, I was under watch by Norkobal. It would keep track of my movements and listen to what I said. Is that correct? Yes, and the distinction here is that in Khmer Rouge parlance, the word soldier was normally used to refer to Khmer Republic military personnel who referred to their own military personnel as combatants. Um, the same collection, so we're still in E3 slash 1714, page 43. Do you have interview number 23, page 43? Interview number 23, March the 10th, 1980, location Sakkao, 
source Um Samang from Tambong 21 Eastern Region. And he says in the second paragraph, sorry, I should give the ERNs, English ERN 0017734. Khmer ໂດຍໃນຊ່ວງເວລານັ້ນຂອງຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົນຄົ
Can you complain, uh, please explain to the court again, Some just very briefly, who Non Suan was? Um, um, a veteran communist from the late 40s or early 50s, uh, uh, who after April 1975 uh, was the chairman of the Agriculture Committee at the Centre level, uh, uh, the equivalent of the Minister of Agriculture. Thank you. Uh, Your page 28, 0017 in Tambon 25, we were told to prepare for evacuees from Phnom Penh only on the 18th of April 1975. We were instructed to prepare food, water and lodging for the evacuees to slaughter animals to feed them and give them co-op rice. Each district was assigned a quota of a number of, evac of evacuees they should accept. We were told that their presence would be temporary. We were told that if the evacuees caused the burden in the co-ops, they should go to the Kum or district committees to ask for surplus to solve the problem. Among those evacuees, the former Lon Nol soldiers Especially the officers were considered were to be considered enemies. Is that an accurate record of what you were told in this interview? Yes, and in conjunction with what in the remainder of the same folder. Tab 6. Document number E3. Slash 390. I don't want to give the name for the moment uh, because I... Done uh, it's being checked, uh, but this interview, E3 slash 390. Can you just confirm that on the front page, the interviewer, Steve Hedder? Uh, I'm just checking to see whether there might be a mistake in the attribution of the name of the interviewee. Should you give me a couple of minutes? បាទអរគុណសាក្សីអរគុណតំណាងហើយពេញណាឥឡូវនេះដល់ពេលសំរំសំរំមកសម្រាក់ហើយហើយមានការសម្រាក់មកពេញនាទីជាប់ពេលព